Welcome to State of Affairs. I'm Steve Arbato. We are, in fact, coming to you from the Agnes Varis NJTV studio in Newark, New Jersey. It is my pleasure to introduce uh, Rabbi Clifford Cohen, spiritual leader of Temple B'nai Abraham in Livingston, New Jersey. Good to see you, Rabbi. You know, we're doing this program uh, toward the back end of 2018. I'll repeat after that. The, um, a recent study by the uh, Anti-Defamation League shown that, showed that, in fact, incidents, anti-Semitic incidents, have risen over 60% in just the last few years because? Because. Well, first of all, there's not common, there's not consensus that those figures are necessarily accurate. What do you think? I think that there is probably perhaps a small rise in such incidents, but what there is, which I think is even more serious, is that there is a much greater uh, sense that it is acceptable to be loudly anti-Semitic and to see the kind of displays that we saw in Virginia some time back. And my personal opinion is that the fellow who committed the atrocity in Pittsburgh just a short while ago actually felt somewhat emboldened by the comments that have come from above that made him realize Define that this above. was the voice of the president. The voice of the president. I believe that. A direct correlation in your mind between President Trump's words and the rise in anti-Semitic actions and or rhetoric? A direct correlation, no. But I think it's a contributing factor, and I'll explain why. Sure. Um, first of all, I don't think the president is anti-Semitic at all. I think that would be difficult, given that he's got his son-in-law and his daughter are precisely, Jewish. Precisely, his daughter converted. Precisely, <clears throat> but I do think that his style of rhetoric and the base that he pays a great deal of attention to riling up is a style of rhetoric that leads to violent statements being made, uh, violent uh, imagery being acceptable. And to me, the crowning example of that was during that march in Virginia, in Charlottesville, Virginia. What were they shouting? Blood and soil, Jews will not replace us, which was actually taken from a specific uh, mantra that was uttered by the Nazis. Blood and Soil, soil, Jews, will not replace us. And this us. was a group of white supremacists who were marching in Charlottesville. And the president, when he spoke about that incident and others, said, quote, there are good people on both sides. Correct. Your reaction to that? It's a reprehensible thing to say. And I don't, I'll be charitable, I don't think he was thinking at the time what he was saying. I think it was a difficult situation. Did he take it back? I don't believe so. But if I were one of those white supremacists and that was what the president would said, I would feel empowered by those words. To do what? To be even louder and to be even more active and more vocal. And in the case of somebody who might have been a bit unhinged to begin with, as was the case in Pittsburgh, to feel that it was acceptable to go ahead and commit the act that he did. Is that a responsibility, responsibility of a public official, even the president of the United States, to leave their free world, to be aware that there are some people that are so unstable that are listening to certain things and interpret them a certain way and could potentially act in a violent fashion? Is that his or her responsibility as an elected official? I don't think so, but it is their responsibility as an elected official to speak in measured ways because they cannot know the impact that their words will have. Look at it like this. Um, I know that you're a parent, as am I. Yep. We never cease to be amazed by words that we think were uttered offhand when our children were young. Years later, they will say to us, you know, Dad, when you said X, Y, Z, in a similar fashion, I don't think somebody in what is effectively, not effectively, the most powerful position in the world can have any sense of the impact that his words can't have, and he must speak in a guarded, measured way. The group of students who were on the front steps um, that had their hands Baraboo, up. Baraboo, Wisconsin. I don't, even, I don't even want to put my hand up. Sorry for even doing that. Where was it? Baraboo, Wisconsin, which group is famous students. because Baraboo, Wisconsin was the summer home of the Ringling Brothers Circus, a piece of trivia I happen See? to know. Those young men with a Nazi salute mm -hmm. that wound up on the internet. You see that, you think what? I see that. I feel sick. 
and I see that, and I believe that was a photo that was not taken all that long ago. No, it was not. And I cannot, again, help but think that part of the reason they felt emboldened that that was an acceptable thing to do was because kind of the rhetoric coming from above, which is in general excessive rhetoric. Is the president supposed rhetoric. to condemn that publicly? And by the way, as we do this, unless I'm wrong on that, he has not condemned that act. Is he responsible? Should he be, and every public official, condemn that? I would like to if think so, If they do yes. not, what are they saying? In Judaism, we have a, a concept that if you have an opportunity to correct a wrong and you don't, you are as guilty as if you had committed the wrong yourself. Now, in all fairness, the president is a busy guy. There may be a lot of such incidents. I don't know about a particular yeah, one. you can't expect However, to in general yeah, right. and as a concept, you, yes. You can't expect the president to be tweeting about things that are not significant. Um, I'm sorry. <laughs> Should not have said that. But let me ask you this. The question now, as we move forward, is what is it that we should be teaching our children, say children who happen not to be Jewish, or children or not? If someone says, well, those are Jewish kids, those aren't, you know, that's not us, tell folks the whole, the, the, the whole, I'm going to get it wrong, you know, when the Nazis came and, you know, like people were expecting it was, some, well, it wasn't me, right. it was them. That still resonates for me right now. I'm going to get it wrong, so I'm going to turn to you, Rabbi, to get it right. Well, I, the, nice. Actually, the quote was by a, a Christian minister at the time. I was silent when, I was silent when, and when, I, when they came for me, nobody was there to say anything. Was he but not saying anything because it wasn't him? He didn't say anything because it wasn't him. And then there was, was nobody to speak up for him. Yeah, but you ask, you ask what we, we do. Yes. I think an outstanding example, my synagogue is located in Livingston. A member of my congregation has been a history teacher there for many years, Jill Tejeda, created a course called History, or Holocaust and Genocide. And in this year-long course, which was only taken, I believe, by seniors, maybe juniors and seniors, they study the Holocaust, but then they also study other acts of genocidal atrocities. Mm -hmm. They learn about Pol Pot. Uh, they learn about um, Uganda. Uh, they learn about Rwanda, excuse me. Genocide. And genocide. And so they use the Holocaust as a way of learning both about the Holocaust, but as a way of learning about genocide in general, which to me is wonderful, because you're not taking the particular experience and leaving it there, but you're taking the particular experience that Jews have experienced and universalizing it. Uh, religion matters, which is in fact why our colleagues here at NJTV have been trying to have a series of conversations with religious leaders about the role of religion in society. Um, Rabbi, thank you. We appreciate it. We'll continue the conversation. Thank you. All the best to you and your congregation. Okay. We'll be back right after this on State of Affairs. State of Affairs with Steve Adubato is a production of the Caucus Educational Corporation, celebrating over 25 years of broadcast excellence. State of Affairs with Steve Adubato is brought to you from the Agnes Veris NJTV studio at 2 Gateway. Funding has been provided by Rowan University, Choose New Jersey, Delta Dental of New Jersey, University Hospital Newark, New Jersey, NJM Insurance Group, New Jersey Resources, Verizon, and by these public-spirited organizations, individuals, and associations committed to informing New Jersey citizens about the important issues facing the Garden State.